I'll be using this beautiful floral Ankara fabric. This is not your typical Ankara fabric. This one sort of like has a glossy, you know, surface, okay? So this is what I'll be using to make our fitted pinafore dress. So the next thing I'm going to do is to fold the fabric to my bust circumference divided by four plus three inches. And I'll be starting from the back first, okay? So my bust circumference is 37. 37 divided by four is 9.25. So 9.25 plus three, that is what? 12.25. So I make sure I fold my fabric to that. So I'm supposed to have about 12.25 here, but I have 12.75. So I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. What I'm going to do next is to draw a straight line somewhere at the top. Just make sure you have like a bit of allowance on your fabric, okay? So I'll just go ahead and... The next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and mark my zipper allowance. So the extra three inches that I added is for zipper allowance and side seam allowance. And I'm going with a zipper allowance of... 1.5 inches so from the folded edge of the fabric i'm going to mark that 1.5 inches so i'll just mark 1.5 inches down and then i'll draw a straight line downwards the next thing i'm going to do is to mark my armhole depth and my armhole round is 18 18 divided by 2 is 9 inches now i don't want this pinafore dress to sort of like be fitted you know under my arm i want my underarm to have a little bit of room so what i'm going to do is come down by an extra half inch so the next thing i'm going to do is mark my shoulder to bust point and that is 10.5 inches okay so i'll come right here mark my 10 and half now we don't need under bust for this what we need is shoulder to waist okay and my shoulder to waist is 16 inches do you understand now I'm not going to mark that 16 inches. What I'm going to do is to come up by 1.5 inches. The reason why I'm coming up by 1.5 inches is because we're going to be attaching a band to this and that 1.5 inches will serve as my band, okay? So I'll come right here now, 16 minus 1.5, that is what, 14.5. Um, so I'll mark 14.5. Do you understand what I just explained? So whatever I've marked on this, my zipper allowance line, I'll come right here now, come to another point, mark it so that we can have a straight line. So I marked 9.5, I marked 10.5, and I marked 14.5. So I'll come right here from the shoulder line, that's the top line that we marked. I'm going to go ahead and mark 9.5, 10.5, and 14.5. Then I'll draw straight lines across. The next thing I'm going to do is to mark my shoulder measurements. My shoulder measurement is 15. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. If I don't want the dress to end up all the way at my shoulder tip, what I'm going to do is come in by half inch or one inch. So I'll just come here now, mark 7 inches, okay? Then I'll come right to this line where I mark the armhole depth. I'll mark 7 inches as well. And then I'll join the points together to have a straight line. I'm going with a shoulder slope of one inch. So I come right here, mark one inch. Whatever I have left here should be eight and a half. Eight and a half divided by two, that is 4.25. So I've marked that. So I'll come right here at my armhole depth, mark my bust circumference divided by four. And for me, that is uh, 37 divided by four, that's 9.25. And I'm going to add one and a half inch seam allowance okay so i'll add it right here and what i'm going to do next is to get my armhole curve i'll be connecting from this mark right here connect it all the way to this line to create our armhole curve what i'm going to do next is to mark the neck width so i'll be going with a neck width of 3.5 inches you can go with four inches you can go with you know three inches that's definitely up to you for the back, I'll be going with a neck depth of one inch, okay? Because I want it high up my neck. So I'm going with a neck depth of one inch. And then I'll just come right here and create a curve for my neck depth. So after curving the neck depth, I'm going to go ahead and extend that one inch all the way to the zipper allowance, okay? And after that, I'll come right here now, connect the neck width right here connect it to this point to create our shoulder slope, just like this. 
Now, I'm going to be marking my bust span, which is usually nipple to nipple distance divided by two. Do you understand? Mine is seven. Seven divided by two is three and a half, okay? So I'll just come from the zipper allowance line, mark that 3.5 inches, come right at the waist, mark 3.5 inches. Okay, what I'm going to do is to draw a straight line connecting the points. Next, I'm going to do is to input my darts. I usually go with a total of one inch for my back darts. So I'll come here, mark half inch on both sides of the line that we just drew. Did you see? And then I'll connect the half inch here to this point, connect the half inch here to this point, okay? I'm going to go ahead now and mark my waist circumference divided by four. My waist is 32, 32 divided by four, that is eight inches. So I'll mark eight inches right here. My dart allowance is what, one inch. So I'll come right here and mark one inch. Then I'll also go ahead and mark my seam allowance, that's my side seam allowance of 1.5 inches, okay? So once I mark that 1.5 inches, what I'm going to do is connect my waist to my bust. I'll be adding seam allowances at the bottom of the bodies that we are drafting. I'll add seam allowance at my armhole, at my shoulder slope, and at my neck depth, okay? The only part that I'm not going to be adding seam allowance is the side seam because we have already included that. So once everything has been added, what I'm going to do now is to cut this out. So okay. guys, after cutting this out, I went ahead to divide the zipper allowance part into two. So the next thing I'm going to do is to shape in my zipper allowance part. This is to help me remove zip bulge at the back of my dress, okay? And what I do for that is to remove half an inch from the zipper allowance part. So I'm going to come right here at the bottom. I'll mark half an inch. So did you see that? And after the zipper allowance line, I'm also going to mark half an inch again. So what I'm going to do is to connect from the edge of the zipper allowance to this half an inch that I marked here. So can you see the line right here? Then I'll connect from this line right here now to the second half an inch that I marked here, okay? So this is where we'll be fixing our zip, not the straight one now, the slanted one. And then I'll trim this off. I'll duplicate this back pattern because I'll be using the same fabric to line, you know, the bodies, okay? I don't want to use a different lining. So guys, after duplicating, this is what I have. And we are done with the back piece. So I'll go ahead and work on the front piece. So for the front part, I went ahead to replicate all these um, lines that I have here. So I have my top line right here. Can you see the seam allowance at the top after that? So then I have my armhole depth right here, my bust point line. So you can see that it matches with what I have on the back piece. I have, you know, my waistline and then I have the seam allowance at the bottom. So what I'm going to do next is to mark the shoulder measurements and I went with um, seven for the back piece. So I need to go with seven as well for the front piece, okay? So I'll just come right here and mark seven inches. Come right at this line, mark seven inches, and then I'm going to join them together to have a straight line. Then I'm going to mark my shoulder slope of one inch, mark my neck width of 3.5 inches, okay? So did you see that? And I'll be going with a very, very low neck depth. So I'll be going with a neck depth of eight inches. So I'll come right here and mark eight inches. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and connect, you know, from the neck width all the way to the neck depth to create a neckline like this. So you can make it, you know, a straight V, you can make it, you know, like a curved V or U shape, whichever you want. Then I'll come right here, join neck width to our one inch downwards to create our shoulder slope, okay? So whatever I have left here, I'll just go ahead and measure this. So I should have about eight and a half. And eight and a half divided by two is 4.25. So I'll come right here, mark 4.25. Because we are working with the front piece, what I need to do is to come inwards by half an inch. This helps to reduce, you know, gaping at the armhole. 
So once I mark that, I'll come right here at this line, mark my bus circumference divided by 4, okay? So my bus circumference divided by 4 is 9.25. So I'll come right here, mark 9.25. And I forgot to mention something. When you are folding your front fabric, just go ahead and fold it by your bust circumference divided by 4 and add 1.5 inches. If your waist is bigger than your bust, of course, use your waist measurement to fold your fabric, then add that 1.5 inches, okay? So after marking 9.25, I'll add seam allowance of 1.5 inches. I'll be connecting from the one inch for shoulder slope to this half an inch inwards I marked at the armhole and, you know, connect it to my bust circumference divided by four, okay? So I'll just do that like this. And this is what we have. Now, what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and mark my bust span, which is nipple to nipple distance and bust span is seven, seven divided by two, 3.5. Then I'll come right here again at the waist, mark that same 3.5. And I'm going to join it together to have a straight line like this. So what I'm going to do next is to come down on this line by half an inch. And then I'll come right at my waist. I'll be marking a dart of a total of 1.5. So I'm going to be having 0 0.75 on both sides. So I'll come right here, mark 0 0.75, come right here, mark 0 0.75. So a total of 1.5 inches and then I'll go ahead and connect from here to where I marked, you know, half inch downwards to the same thing here as well. So after adding my seam allowances, I went ahead to cut out my pattern and this is what it looks like. So once I open it up, this is what I have. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and duplicate this um, front pattern just like I did for the back, I want to use the same fabric to line it. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate it, okay? So now that I've duplicated all the patterns, I'll take this to my sewing machine now, and then I'll sew the dots at the bottom of the front and the back patterns, okay? For both the main fabric and the lining fabric. After sewing my dots, I went ahead to press them towards the center back and also towards the center front. The next thing I'm going to do is to join the pieces up together. Now, what I'm going to do is to attach, you know, lining to lining and fabric to fabric. So since both lining and fabric are the same, I'll just go ahead and, you know, attach front pieces to back pieces by the side seam, okay? So can you see what I'm doing? Here is the side seam. I'll be sewing by one and a half inch um, seam allowance from top to bottom. So I'll just pin this down and do the same thing for this other side now. This is going to be like the first piece or this would be tagged, you know, main fabric, whichever you decide. Since both of them are the same fabric, I'm not bothered about that. So once I've pinned this first one, I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the second one as well. And you want to make sure that you are attaching it right sides touching, okay? So I'll pin this down. Do the same thing for the other side as well. Pin down. And then I'll be sewing the side seams by 1.5 inch since that is what I, you know, gave as allowance. So after sewing the pieces together, this is what I have. Now, you can decide to go on to trim off this um, seam allowances, maybe to one inch or half an inch. But I'm going to leave mine like this. And what I'm going to do is to go on to press the seams open. Do you understand? So I'll go ahead and press the seam open. So guys, after I've pressed the seams open, for each of the pieces, I'll sew the shoulder slope together, okay? So I'm going to sew by a half an inch, sew this one as well by a half an inch, okay? And then I'll repeat the same thing for the second piece. So guys, after sewing the shoulder slopes, I press the seam open as you can see, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is to place them on top of each other with right side touching. So after placing them right sides on right sides, I went ahead to match the shoulder seam around one of the armhole as well as the side seam, just one of it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all around this armhole by a half an inch seam allowance, okay? So after sewing the armhole, I'll go ahead and notch all around it because this is a curved part that we just sewed. And notching it will make the fabric to sit well on each other. So go ahead and notch yours. So after notching, I'll turn everything through this ampoule okay so please watch what i'm doing 
So first of all, separate your bodies into two like this, and then push one of it through the armhole. So once you do that, you're going to have your bodies looking like this. Okay? So right here is my armhole. Now, I'm going to make sure that I place this other side too. Ensure that it aligns properly, okay? Making sure that your fabric is not twisted in any way. If not, if you go ahead and sew while it is twisted, you are going to have an issue turning your armhole. Once everything has been aligned, it is going to look like this. So remember that we haven't sewn this side yet. What I'm going to do is open it up like this, and then I'm going to pin shoulder seam to shoulder seam, okay? And then I'll look for my side seam, which is right here. Open it up from here. So can you see what I'm doing? And then I'm going to pin side seam to side seam. So once that is all done, I will take this to my sewing machine now and begin to stitch. So that pinning has helped you to place it in the direction in which you can sew. So I'll sew all around this armhole. And after sewing, I'll also top stitch it so that it lays nicely, okay? After sewing and top stitching the armhole, this is what I have. And please make sure that you are top stitching in the same direction you did the first one, okay? So once everything is completed, I will just turn it so you can see how the bodice looks, okay? So when you turn it, this is how it is going to look like. So by the time you finish sewing your armhole, it should look like this. If your bodice is looking twisted, then you have done something wrong somewhere. You have not followed my explanation. What we are going to do next is to sew our neckline, our zipper allowance, and top stitch those places. What I'm going to do to sew the neck pieces together is to place it right sides touching. So I'll go ahead and place the center of my neckline at the front, place it on top of each other, and pin down. So after I've pinned the neckline, down i'll go ahead and match the shoulder seams okay so some parts of the bodies will sort of be sandwiched in between okay so don't worry about that just go ahead and pin the shoulder seams around the neckline and then i'll come right here pin my zipper allowance area which is this edge right here so I'll come to this other side now, sandwich everything in here so that I can match the shoulder seams, okay? So once I match it, I'll just pin it down like this. Then I'll come right at the zipper allowance area. So you need to make sure that you have everything right sides to right sides touching. Do you understand? And once you finish pinning the neckline all the way from the front to the back, everything should be straight at the edge like this. So can you see? Everything should be straight like this, okay? So once you have it like this, it means you are doing something right. And then I'll go on to sew half an inch at the entire neckline. And I'm going to make sure I top stitch towards the lining so that the neckline can lay really well. Do you understand? So guys, after sewing and top stitching the neckline, I went ahead to close up the zipper allowance area on both ends by a half an inch seam allowance. So what I'm going to do next is to turn my body's right sides out, okay? So I'll just bring everything out. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm bringing everything out through the armhole. So you can see that it is coming out quite nicely. 
okay so now that it is out like this i'll poke out this um zipper allowance area because it is sort of pointed i'll poke that out do the same thing for the other side as well go ahead and poke it out and then i'm going to give this bodice a very very good press after pressing your bodice it should look as neat as this okay I went ahead to cut my waistband to the length of the bodice, the waist from the zipper allowance all the way to the other zipper allowance. The length I have here is 34. I cut my waistband to 35 inches. Do you understand? I have an extra one inch for seam allowance on both sides. Now, the width of my band is 1.5 inches. Remember that I removed that 1.5 inches from the length of the half bodice. So it's supposed to be 16 so i removed 1.5 so the length of my bodice is now 14.5 i want to add that 1.5 inches back as band so i didn't cut it to 1.5 okay you need to add seam allowances for joining you know the band to the bodice and also the, for and also for joining the other end of the band to the skirt part of this pinafore dress that we are making so total width of band that i have here is 2.5 inches remove half an inch remove half an inch here to become you know 1.5 and i cut it into two so i have two pieces right here so that it can cover each other okay and what i also did was to fuse this with gum stay so that it is sort of like a little bit stiff the next thing i'm going to do is sandwich my bodies in between the band okay so what i'm going to do now is place the waist of the bodies half an inch away from the edge of the band. Remember I said, you know, we added one inch, half an inch seam allowance on both sides of the band. So I'll place it half an inch away from the edge right here. Use the other one to cover it, okay? So can you see what I'm doing? I'll use the other one to cover it like this. And then what I'm going to do is to pin this down. I'll come to the other end here as well and do the same thing. Place the waist of the bodice half an inch away from you know the band then i'll use the other one to cover it up like this so can you see what i'm doing and then i'll go on to pin this down as well so what i'm going to do is to take this to my sewing machine and sew the entire thing from edge to edge making sure that i hold the bodies to the band i'll sew everything up with a half an inch seam allowance so after sewing that up i went ahead to close the edge of the waistband by a half an inch seam allowance on both ends i'm going to cut off this um, excess right here very close to the stitch do the same thing here as well so that that place is not bulky i just go ahead and you know turn it right sides out like this and i go on to poke the ends very very simple i'll press this down and then we're going to move on to the next stage of this pinafore dress so i'll be using two yards of fabric for the skirt part of this uh, pinafore dress i have here two yards and what i've done is to fold it selvage to selvage okay so can you see i folded the selvage to selvage we are going to be dividing it at this fold into two the reason why i'm doing it like this is so that i can you know have a lot of fullness in this skirt part okay so after folding it into two i have 23 inches and i'm going to you know have half an inch seam allowance at the bottom half an inch seam allowance at the top so it's going to leave me with 22 inches and the length of my body is is 16 inches plus the band so the total length of my bodice plus band is 16 inches so 16 plus 22 that's 38 inches it means that this is definitely okay for my own length do you understand so what i'm going to do now is to divide this into two so guys after dividing this into two I'm going to make sure that I place the fabrics on top of each other, right sides to right sides touching, and I'll go ahead and stitch this part down, so it's by half an inch. At the end of the day, I'll be ending up with fabric of four yards by what? By 23 inches. Do you understand? I converted two yards by 46 inches into 
four yards by 23 inches so that i can have a lot of fullness by the time i sew this up okay and then after i join this part here to get my four yards i'll go ahead and run gathered or basting stitch at the top of the fabric we're going to gather this to my waist circumference okay i've sewn the basting stitch already all i need to do is to pull the thread and the fabric you know will begin to gather so i'm going to do this throughout the entire length of this fabric gather it to my waist circumference okay <laughs> So after gathering, the next thing I'm going to do is to attach it to the waistband. So I'm going to make sure that I have the wrong side of my skirt touching the lining part of my bodice. That's very, very important. So I'm going to match it like this and pin it down. So I'll be attaching the band to the skirt. I'll be sewing it together by half an inch from this end right here, as you can see, all the way to the other end here so i'll just fix this part now so i want to fix it just in case the gathered part is longer than the band i can easily just fold it in there do you understand so i'll just go ahead and pin this down take it to my sewing machine and stitch so we're stitching only to one part of the band the other part of the band is what we're going to use to cover you know the raw edges up Okay, so I'll go ahead and stitch this down now. After sewing the skirt to the band, what I'm going to do is to use the other part of the band. I folded it by the seam allowance, okay? I'll just use it to cover the raw edges that I have here from beginning to the end. And I'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch it down to conceal everything, okay? Attaching the waistband together, concealing all raw edges. The next thing I want to do is to fix my zipper. So what I did was to place, you know, the pieces together, that's the back. I placed it together, right side touching, and I went ahead to sew from the bottom all the way to where I want my zipper to stop. Okay, and then I'll be using an invisible zip for this dress. So I've placed it at my zipper allowance line. I'll go ahead and stitch very, very close to the teeth of the zipper all the way to where I, you know, stitched at the bottom where I want the zipper to stop. So I will do this on both sides. And that's it guys. We are done with our dress.